Hello, this is Dr. Janicito. I'm the instructor for this course in uh, Taylor's College, CPU, the Canadian Pre-University Program, in sunny Subang Jaya. This media arts course, uh, we're going to be covering in this uh, video uh, principles of design. And uh, I think you'll find it very helpful as uh, you create your own media arts. So when we talk about the principles of design, it's how you can most effectively use the elements of the artwork in order to create a message that will um, impact your audience and that they'll understand what it is that um, this um, piece of um, art is trying to convey to them. So you want to have some sort of clarity. And, and here in Malaysia, we have quite a history of working with elements of design. And this little beautiful piece of batik done by this woman and uh, once we finish this first video, there will be two videos. Uh, the first one will cover uh, the elements of design, and then the second one will look at the principles of design as it applies to the um, motion picture industry. So anyways, let's go back to uh, what are those elements of design. Well, we start with color, and uh, we also want to make sure we've got shape and texture as well. And uh, we also want to make sure that we use uh, space in an effective way, because in Eastern art, we make use of it. Whereas Western art, when they see uh, a blank, they think of it as empty. But the Eastern philosophy is where there is something that's not filled, it doesn't mean that it's empty. In the blank, there is meaning. So uh, let me just say that the other elements are form and uh, movement. So this is a great example of this whole use of Eastern art making use of shape. And so this is a famous um, uh, pen and ink uh, called Li Po chanting a poem. He's a philosopher. And uh, you know why we call it pen and ink is because um, using a pen, they've dinked it into an inkwell and they've uh, delineated it with very simple strokes this character of Li Po chanting a poem. The rest of uh, the space is not touched, but it does have meaning. So whereas in Western art, they'd start filling up with, I know, plants, you know, background, clouds, who knows, maybe a musical instrument. Anyways, so what I wanted to say is how you use the elements of art is very important, but make sure the underlying message or the story is something that uh, is going to be, you know, I'd say, enriching to the human condition and the spirit. Otherwise, you'll get, as they say, a hot mess. So you want to make sure your message is clear, and crisp, and concise. Um, you don't want to be wishy-washy um, because it, it's just you know boring. So you want something that will actually provoke um, you know a bit of tension, something that is, um, as I say, the clarity of your vision. Hopefully, will be provoking some sort of tension, or at least a wake-up call, or an impetus, or stimulation. Now let's go into what I've looked at. I took some of this material from um, Cornell, from the Getty Museum, um, from the LA uh, Museum, um, that's that's the Getty Museum. And then I also looked at some uh, websites as well, and there's plenty of others. Well, when you talk about the principles of, uh, sorry, the, the principles of design and the use of the different elements, what is the message? And this is where you want a clarity of vision. You want unity. You want everything that work that is inside the, the, the frame to to have meaning there. Now here's a, uh, this is uh, from um, the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's. Now you notice here, within the frame, everybody here seems to be, you know, in black or white and a little bit blurry, except for the central figure. Um, Holly Golightly, played by Audrey Hepburn um, in the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's. And so um, notice how, how the director, Blake Edwards, uh, manages to make sure that you know she's the central character. Well, she's the center here. She is one of the very few people who's not wearing black. She's, you know, she's just wearing white. Everybody else is blurred and she's not. She looks you know, quite happy uh, to be there. So you see that's what I mean by the unity. So, uh, first of all, um, there's unity. Now, next, what you want to know is, is there balance? And so what it is, is ev is everything there, like all these different objects and the color and the form and the movement, is it something that 
it has a balance, or is it just slapped together? And so it's intentional. Now look at this. This is the well, it's donuts. And as you can see, here's the logo for donuts. Now it does have balance, and it's a symmetrical balance. You notice that they've got the whirlies here, and it's you can even bisect it, um, put it on an angle, and very much um, it's stable in the symmetrical balance. Now here's one that is not um, symmetrically balanced. It's not even asymmetrically balanced. It is what they call radial balance. So this is the central point and everything is swirling around. Oh, but there is a bit of tension because it's not something that's predictable in that yes it's balanced but it's off center. Right, so it's not right in the middle, and um, you, you see a um, you know her, part of her back profile. So there's something about this image, although it's radially balanced, it, there's something that's a little bit, as I say, off. And this is from the famous movie by Alfred Hitchcock. It's been named um, one of the best movies ever. Um, I think it actually was by Sight and Sound magazine named the best be, be, best motion picture ever, and it's. Um, very profound, it's very, very artistic, and it's by Alfred Hitchcock. So besides balance and unity, what is it that's being emphasized? And you can use um, this, L, uh, this principle of design to, to take the elements and make sure that you are capturing something. So here's a, here it is, it's a, it's a street scene. And uh, you can tell in the background it looks like a port um, and so these are the, the different streets, and you can see all the hustle and bustle leading towards the, the, the focus on um, the, the port. Um, it's a night scene, obviously. I guess it's the moon in the background, and you've got lights. But what is it that's emphasized here? It's this, because it's red. All these others are rather muted, neutral colors. This one's red. And besides being red, you see, you know, faded yellow and it's Chinese. So this tells you a little bit about what the port is. It could be a Chinese port, it could be a port, um, say Singapore, um, so or a port anywhere where there's a lot of people of Chinese background. So you could see that um, using subtlety of color um, that you can, that you, your, the director is um, highlighting and prioritizing this image. So uh, unity, balance, emphasis, and now movement. Uh, so looking at the, I'm going to be showing you an image of where you see the director wanting to draw your eye. And this is from a, a famous movie um, which uses, I think, yellows and then reds and black uh, in order to um, tr uh, direct your eye. And so there it is. This is from Francis Ford Coppola's Apocalypse Now, another very, very profound moment in film history. So um, they're, they're going in that direction. So you've got Baby Bear, Mama Bear, Papa Bear, and I guess Grandfather Bear all heading this way. And it looks like they've got, um, it's almost like birds in the background, but it's not. It's other um, attack helicopters. So I'm not going to tell you too much more about the movie Apocalypse Now, except there's something you really really should see. It's a longish movie um, and you really don't want to be interrupted so do yourself a favor and make sure that your iPhones and your other beepers are turned off so you can enjoy this incredible experience of Apocalypse Now. Now the pattern is very important as well. What is it uh, that is, well, well for example here, this is from um, a movie called Rear Window and the protagonist, played by James Stewart, is uh, his, his legs in a cast. And so he, as uh, for entertainment, he doesn't have a TV set. He, he's a photojournalist, so he takes his telephoto lens and he looks out of his rear window. Now, pattern. So you've got rectangle, 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 rectangular shape, rectangular, 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 rectangular. It's a lot of rectangles that he's looking out onto. Even the, the uh, background is supposed to be in New York City, so lots of rectangles. So very predictable, not a lot of tenseness, so a bit of boredom. 
and you can imagine if you're six weeks in your apartment and um, you don't have television that it can be pretty humdrum and so maybe that's why he's taking his photo telephoto lens and spying on his neighbors <laughs> anyways um, rear window another Alfred Hitchcock film and it's probably it's it's one of his best as well all right so um, well you've got pattern now rep pattern can repeat and then um, when you have a rep rep repeating pattern it doesn't have to be boring sometimes it can be actually quite stimulating so notice here what is to what is the color this year well it's lime lime green and you can see it's repeated all over these two pages but it's not repeated in the same way that rear window was repeated was was uh, a bit boring shapes this one has it's maybe the same color but there's emphasis here it is um, emphasis on uh, this um, sort of a navy blue and that turquoise blue and here's another turquoise blue and there's a little bit of turquoise blue here red a red red a little bit of pink over here lots of white in the background as well and um, the perspective it is shifted so, because we know a closets um, are are really that size and whereas the baby um, baby toy is not that size I mean it would be a very scary big baby if that were the case so playing around with perspective and proportion also um, helps uh, you to see that although it is green it's not it's not boring to be in Ikea with this season's color uh, oh I did I say proportion well here's proportion so how do the things relate to each other so if you look at a standard picture and you look some of it somebody is in front somebody's you know just beside them you you can sort of calibrate who how, how tall each person is well let me show you this movie poster and here it is it's uh, another Alfred Hitchcock movie this one's North by Northwest and uh, notice the um, size of Cary Grant's face and in the back uh, these faces are huge even though they're way in the background so that tells you that in real life like compared to Cary these these are not they're not just huge they're ginormous and um, he's running so you can see there's uh, some motion being indicated and then there's this plane there and uh, I wonder what that plane's significance is to this film North but Northwest well you have to watch it for yourself and why is uh, why are these guys in the background again you have to watch it for yourself it's a fantastic movie it's well you could even call it a first date movie whereas I'd say vertigo no don't do that unless you want to some somebody drop you uh, anyway so rhythm is uh, basically how the the elements of design are used together to create some sort of a pattern or tenseness so I'll just show you this and this is from another Oscar winning movie called Sunset Boulevard now here's the rhythm in that you've got them sitting it's almost like a houndstooth um, pattern uh, sofa and uh, but it's a sort of an older houndstooth it's not really modern and so you have already got a sense of you know there's a bit of you know, mustiness or something that's antiquish about this and you've got um, you know this uh, uh, young picture of this woman who's very youngish and um, so you see those two together then you could say oh well it could be you know a bit of a match they, they go together but instead he's drinking champagne with this woman who is well she's a little bit older than him probably maybe I don't know 20 some years and uh, this isn't a mother and son thing because if they're drinking champagne um, yeah so that's not it and, and I mean she's wearing a very low-cut gown etc so um, and she's got jewels on so yeah it, it's it's not a family thing going on here and so you say okay well that, there yeah there's something a bit off about this well this is her so in this movie Sunset Boulevard you've got this um, movie star um, and uh, through the ages and I can't tell you more than that you've got to watch the movie yourself so hmm so that, that the rhythm is a bit off now the next one is variety and I'm near the end but variety you'll see that um, you've got here they're celebrating New Year's in a Spanish country but these folks are looking very very serious there's something off about this in the variety so you'll have to watch the movie Godfather 2 
and enjoy it yourself.